When we look out into the universe, there's a big problem. It looks the same in all directions and matter is roughly distributed. That is weird, right? Like, because if you think about it, nothing can travel faster than the speed of light, right? That's what Einstein's theory of special relativity tells us. So if you look in one direction in the universe and we see like the most distant thing there is, right? Where light has been traveling the entire lifetime of the universe before it gets to us here so that we can see it. And we do the exact same thing in the opposite direction for the most distant thing we can see where light has been traveling the entire lifetime of the universe before it finally gets to us here so we can see it. Those two things shouldn't really look the same because they've never been in contact with each other before. There's no way that light has had enough time to travel from that part of the universe to that part of the universe over there. And yet they look the same and they have roughly the same properties. This is even more obvious if you look at the oldest light in the universe, what's known as the cosmic microwave background. You might have seen this picture of all these red and blue splotches representing the different temperature across the universe when this light was emitted. But did you know that from the coldest spot shown by the blue to the hottest spot shown by the red, that temperature difference is only 0.0001 Kelvin. It is absolutely tiny. What it means is that on average, when this light was emitted, the universe was roughly the same temperature everywhere. Like what heat there was had been evenly distributed to what's known as thermal equilibrium despite the fact that at that time, the universe was still too big for light to have traveled from one side to the other to communicate that information of what temperature it is over here versus over here. That information was over the light travel horizon. This is the horizon problem and it's led to some really interesting ideas about the universe to try and solve it. So in this video, we're gonna chat first, what the cosmic microwave background actually is. Like, where does this like come from? Two, what we mean by the cosmic horizon and what the horizon problem is. And then three, some solutions to the horizon problem, including inflation, a cyclical universe, and the idea of varying the speed of light. But before we do that, I just wanna chat about our mental health because I don't know about anybody else, but mine got a lot worse during the pandemic. Like I developed anxiety for the first time and I just put off dealing with it for far too long. Like I'd make excuses, like I was too busy at work or it just wasn't convenient to go to therapy. But then I discovered BetterHelp. This is a paid partnership with them. BetterHelp makes connecting with a therapist so easy and convenient for those of us who've struggled in the past to find time for therapy. The platform is online and your therapy is done remotely, whether that's by video call or by text, whatever you prefer, and so you can fit it in around your lifestyle. By filling out a few questions, BetterHelp can connect you with a credentialed therapist in under 48 hours in most cases. But if you don't fit well with that therapist, which is pretty common in therapy, you can just switch to a new one free of charge, which is so convenient. Look, I know that my anxiety is not a major mental health problem compared to what other people are going through, but therapy really did give me the tools to help manage it. So if any of this is sounding familiar, no matter how small you think your problem might be, give therapy a go. Try out BetterHelp and see if it helps you. Look, there's a link in the video description to betterhelp.com forward slash Dr. Becky, which if you click, you know, not only supports this channel, but also gets you 10% off your first month's therapy with BetterHelp. So thanks again to BetterHelp. And now let's get back to chatting about the horizon problem. And first let's chat about what the cosmic microwave background actually is. Well, when I describe it in passing on this channel, I always say, oh, you know, it's the oldest light in the universe, which is true, but where does that light come from? We have to think about what the early universe was like, sort of in the first few hundred thousand years of the universe's lifetime. It was much denser and therefore much hotter back then. So hot that all of your matter and your photons, your particles of light, was trapped in essentially one big blob of plasma that's opaque. Plasma is the fourth state of matter where you've got electrons and protons separated rather than bound together in atoms. But then as the universe expanded more, it 
cooled down. Those particles lost energy and slowly but surely they could then be bound together in atoms. Electrons bound with protons. Then you have gas rather than plasma, which is transparent and those photons were free to stream wherever they wanted to. The universe was transparent for the first time. That happened when the universe was about 3000 Kelvin in temperature and about 380,000 years old. That happened everywhere in the universe all at the same time and that light was sent off in all directions. Now because it takes light time to travel to us, traveling at the fastest speed there is, there's only so far that we can see out into the universe. This distance that we can see is known as our horizon or the observable universe. Horizon because like it inherits its name from like the horizon here on earth, right? That you can't see beyond it. Like it's akin to that. You can actually calculate like what our current horizon is in the universe fairly simply, right? Because distance equals speed times time. So if light travels at around 300 million meters per second and the universe has been around for about 13.8 billion years, then our horizon is how far light can travel in that time. It's currently around 130 trillion trillion meters away or 81 billion trillion miles or 13.8 billion light years. Beyond that, we can't see anything yet because light hasn't had time to get to us. But as time passes, that horizon grows and new parts of the universe enter into what we can observe. And the first thing that we detect from those parts of the universe is the light that's been traveling for the longest, the oldest light in the universe, the cosmic microwave background. So what's the horizon problem then? Well, if we think about it, how big the horizon is in the universe depends on how old the universe is. So when the universe was much younger, the horizon was much smaller. We can actually work it out for when the cosmic microwave background was released, right? Light travels at the same speed. The universe is 380,000 years old, which means the horizon was about 3.6 billion trillion meters or 380,000 light years. So when the cosmic microwave background was emitted, only the parts of the universe that were within 380,000 light years of each other were able to influence each other or transfer information. Like for example, in a heat transfer to evenly distribute the energy around so the universe is all the same temperature. And yet when we look at the cosmic microwave background coming from all directions, it's roughly the same temperature with the same spectrum of light in all locations. Despite the fact that when the cosmic microwave background was emitted, those different parts of the universe were beyond each other's horizon. They will never have come into what's known as causal contact with each other. This is what the horizon problem is. And essentially it means the cosmic microwave background shouldn't be as smooth as it is. Yeah, all right, there are these tiny fractional changes in the temperature, which are you know shown in this classic diagram of its detection with the colder spots being the places that gas first cooled enough to become dense enough to form stars and galaxies. But given the horizon problem, the cosmic microwave background should look vastly different, like with huge temperature fluctuations from one part of the universe to another, leading to a much more clumpy universe where matter is less evenly distributed. This was first pointed out in 1956 by Rindler, back when the existence of the cosmic microwave background had been predicted, but not yet observed. So since when we observe the universe, it is much more homogeneous with matter spread evenly and also isotropic, i.e. looking the same in all directions, then we had to be missing something in our best model of the universe. So what are some ways that we can solve this problem? What can we add to our best model of the universe? Well, the most widely accepted way is through an idea called inflation, which was first proposed by Guth in 1981. And inflation is the idea that very early in the universe's life, the universe expanded at an exponential rate increasing its size by a factor of a hundred trillion trillion in just a trillion trillion trillionth of a second. What it means is that inflation takes the parts of the universe that were inside the horizon and expands space so rapidly that they're now outside of the horizon. Parts that used to be in causal contact with each other and could influence each other and reach that temperature equilibrium then become bigger than the entire observable universe at later times. Meaning that in every direction you look, the universe will look the same and the cosmic microwave background will have the same average temperature. And it's not just the horizon problem that cosmic inflation solves. It also explains like why the geometry of the universe is flat and it explains why there's no giant magnetic monopoles hanging around space. So it's had a lot of successes and yet people still don't like it because it is a little bit wishy-washy. 
change one of the parameters like a tiny amount and you can get like any behavior you want out of inflation and therefore any look to the universe. So some people argue because of that, it doesn't really meet the standards of like a proper scientific theory. But then others argue that, you know, like by measuring properties of the universe more precisely, we can then narrow down what the properties of inflation should be and we should be able to fine tune it like that. But I mean, the biggest issue to me though, as an observer rather than a theorist is that Inflation isn't really testable with observations, at least not with our current telescopes and their limitations. So obviously other ideas have cropped up over the years. One of the more popular ideas is that of a cyclical universe where you're going through these endless cycles of Big Bang expansion, which then at some point turns back around into a big crunch contraction. After a couple of cycles, this acts just like inflation because you bring all the areas of the universe into causal contact during the crunch, which means that during the next Big Bang expansion period, you've then got the entire universe in thermal equilibrium leading to this like homogeneous universe where you have this even distribution of temperature you see in the cosmic microwave background. I wouldn't get excited though, because these cycles are expected to last trillions of years. So it's not like we're about to see, I wouldn't get excited though, because these cycles are expected to last trillions of years. So it's not like we're about to see you know, find some evidence that the universe's expansion rate is slowing down and we're going into a big crunch. Plus also like the cyclical model of the universe doesn't explain as many of the things as inflation does. Like it really struggles to explain away this like giant magnetic monopole problem as well. And then of course you've got these models that try to vary the speed of light. You know, this speed limit of the universe, which ultimately sets the size of the horizon. So in these ideas, what people are saying is that in the early universe, light can travel much faster. So the horizon problem essentially disappears because all the universe can be in causal contact with each other. But these sort of varying the speed of light ideas really struggle the most with sort of explaining the horizon problem because as soon as you start tweaking the speed of light, you've got a long line of dominoes that you've knocked over, you know, like bits of physics that all start breaking that have, you know, long been supported by observational evidence. So where does that leave us? Well, it leaves us with a horizon problem that for now is best explained by introducing inflation into our best model of the universe. But our best model of the universe is facing pressure from other areas of astrophysics that I've talked a lot about on this channel before, which could lead to some scientific explorations of new physics, you know, in the next decade or so. And who knows what might pop out of those scientific explorations? You know, it might be a new solution to this long standing horizon problem. And if that's the case, all I hope is that whatever solution people come up with, it is actually testable with our observations of the universe. That happened everywhere. <clears throat> There's a motorbike outside and I'm just gonna take this time to crack my back because oh my God. Oh. That happened everywhere in the universe, all at this motorbike. I thought you were done. Absolute menace, disturbing everyone. You have been labeled a disturber of the peace. But the biggest issue to me as an observer, pep, pep, get off my face hair. Oh, you know, in like one hair, it's like it's absolutely in the itchiest spot you can. Big bang expansion, which then at some point turns around into a big crunch. What's the opposite of expansion? D expansion? No. <laughs> D expansion. Contraction. <laughs> I got 99 problems and the horizon ain't one. Thanks to inflation. Yeah. <laughs> you know that's gonna be a hit. 